start of another reading vlog. So this is just gonna be a weekend, somewhat reading vlog. The main goal of this weekend is to go see Heather McMahon, our absolute favorite comedian. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so she is performing live in Lexington, Kentucky for filming her special of the farewell tour. And we decided a while ago that wherever she was filming her special, we would make an effort to go. And we have done that. We have made a large effort to get from Washington to Kentucky. You have to fly into Louisville, Kentucky, and then we have to drive an hour and a half to Lexington, yep. which is tomorrow's adventure. But today's adventure consisted of leaving my work at 11 a.m. and getting here at about 11, well, I guess it's currently 11.30, we got here at about 11 p.m. this time. So Eastern time, yep. Been a long day. As far as reading, I am digging into Babel, everyone's favorite new release. I'm about halfway through. I read quite a bit on the plane on the way over here. Loving it so far. You can tell the author really has a passion for linguistics. That makes it really fun, but I don't know if the dark academia genre overall is for me. It's giving me a lot of like flashbacks to college and I'm probably gonna have a stress dream about college tests tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Do you want to talk about what you're reading? Just another novel within the thriller series I enjoy. Um, by Preston and Child. Yes, it's called For those Blue Labyrinth. Who might be aware, I have dubbed that the Pendergast universe, I think. Is that in the main series? It of is. Pendergast? Okay. Mm -hmm. Which one is it? Oh, geez. Ten? Somewhere in there. Okay, so she is significantly ahead of me because I still haven't <laughs> read number four. So that's where we're at. It's pretty late, so probably just gonna need to get ready for bed and I will check back in in the morning. Good morning. So it's about 10.30 now. Checkout isn't until noon. And that's also when we need to pick up our car from the rental agency. So we're just gonna kind of, we have already eaten breakfast. So now we're just going to kind of finish getting ready, make way over to the airport. And then the hour and a half drive to Lexington will be a thing. <laughs> I did make it to, I guess like page 300-ish to Babel and I'm still really enjoying it so far. You know, I've heard a couple of people's criticisms that it feels like a little modern in language considering it's supposed to take place in like the 1830s slash 40s, but that's not really bugging me that much. I'm really enjoying the exploration of privilege and intersectionality. Our four main characters are a mix of races and we have two male characters and two female characters and just seeing how each of their identities affect their experience at Oxford is really, really interesting and really, I don't know, I just, you can tell how much passion RF Kuang has put into this book. She's making incredibly detailed footmarks, expanding the world. She really cares about this magic system. It's just, it's really fun to read a book that the author was so passionate in writing and you can really feel that through the writing itself. But it is kind of interesting to see some of the similarities between this book and like mostly trope wise some of the similarities between this book and the poppy war series especially since i've read like the poppy war series like so not that long ago so it's gonna be interesting to see as rf kwong continues to write if she really kind of develops a unique kind of set of tropes within herself and her work we still have like a school setting. There is a time jump within the school setting, like in the Poppy War. Our main character is flawed, but understandably flawed. Like they come from a place of such low privilege that it skews their ability to hold true to their own values and their own beliefs. It's pretty interesting to have such a similar character to Rin in our main character Robin. I can see why RF Kuang would describe Poppy War as like the training wheels for this book. It's exploring a lot of the same themes as the Poppy War, but it just definitely feels a lot more refined than the Poppy War. Big shouts to this book and I'm gonna keep reading it. <laughs> Hey, we 
we made it to Lexington. So quick room tour, there's our bed. We have an incredible view of the HVAC outside. <laughs> so that's fun. So I think the plan is now to just go try to find some lunch and then probably come back and get ready for the show. I don't know, we might do some exploring. We'll have to see. just got back from the Heather McMahon show. It was incredible, Absolutely so much fun. Awesome. And I think the benefit to it being the second. second filming, so like she did a show last night, Friday night for the filming. This was Saturday, the second filming. She did a lot of her reshoot, reshoots <laughs> after the show. So we got to like be there for the Hollywood behind the scenes reshoots. So that was really fun. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it immensely. Yes, me too. Honestly, I don't know. It's hard to beat the first show we went to. I just have like such good like vibes associated with that show, but the show was incredible. Awesome. So good. Highly recommend. 10 out of 10. Hopefully it'll be like on Netflix or Hulu or something like easy to stream. If so, definitely check out Heather McMahon's farewell tour special. We'll be going to her comeback tour in March. Gucci gang. Gang gang. And we're about to go out and just enjoy Halloween now with our little cheaty ears. Let's go. <laughs> Went to many a college bar. Got some Jimmy John's. I have not eaten it yet because I had to call somebody whilst drunk. As far as somebody who is well above college age trying to go out in this town, I think I was fairly successful, so. Probably gonna call it a night and be done. Well, I feel like hot fire garbage this morning, so that's fun. <sighs> It's not been great. Gosh, I'm all bloated from drinking. Ugh. I sent my sister off to brunch with her friend that came down from Cincinnati. So at least she got to go do something fun while I sat here and wallowed in my nausea. There we go. Probably won't drink again for a while. Anyway, it's like 11. 38 checkouts in 20 minutes so the plan is to take the car back to lexington drop the car off and spend some time derping around in louisville i think on the way back we might drive into versailles a little bit which i still hate that it's called versailles instead of versailles but we're dealing uh and go check out some kind of pretty scenery stuff so if we do that i will definitely get some clips
Oh hey, we are back in Louisville at the same hotel that we were at on Friday night. So I obviously didn't really get any reading done this morning. After my sister and her friend got back from brunch, we ended up driving out to Kentucky Horse Park. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a horse theme park. I don't know how else to describe it. There weren't like rides or anything, but there was like a lot of horses there, obviously, museum, a little museum, of yeah, derby. of like derby history and like evolutionary history of horses. So yeah, that was kind of fun. So those are the clips you saw of that. And then once we were done there, we just headed straight back to Louisville and it was a torrential freaking downpour, like most of the way back. So that was not ideal. But we are back here now. It is about four o'clock. I think we're gonna go get like early dinner and then the plan is just to come back here and hang out. So I should be able to get some good reading done on Babbel when we get back from dinner and hopefully have a nice little reading update. <laughs> to my house from Kentucky. Obviously I look a bit of a mess cause I've been up since 1 a.m. my time. That doesn't matter cause I'm home now. And during my reading last night and today on the plane, I managed to finish out the rest of Babel. So it is done. It is a very, very good book. Personally, I did not rate it as high as the Poppy Ward series, but that is more of a personal preference thing. Objectively, I think it is probably more well-written and more refined than the Poppy Ward series, but just the whole, I don't think dark academia is for me. I don't think academic settings are necessarily for me because it just reminds me too much of my own academic trauma. <laughs> but other than that, this book specifically, I enjoyed immensely. Most of the book feels kind of like an urban fantasy, historical fiction vibe, very fun and cozy to kind of live in. And then all of a sudden it turns into like crime, political thriller, high, high stakes, incredible. So good. I love the way this was put together. I love the way it was written. I think Rebecca Kwong did just so many things and they are all really good. <laughs> like it's just there's so much packed into this book as far as themes and plot and character development and characterization and it's all just done really really well. Our four main characters are so well flushed out you really understand why they make the decisions they make and even like some of the side characters we get kind of deep into their backgrounds and the way they think so even you even understand the decisions that you know the other characters are making and why they're making them. Not that this is a fault, but because you understand these characters so well, you can kind of predict a lot of the major plot points. And I think this is also, you know, a sign of really good foreshadowing. I did kind of see some major things coming down the line. I was still surprised by some stuff, but I did see a lot of stuff coming. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think having a predictable plot, you know, setting up a plot and setting up characters that a reader can identify with enough to know what the next step is gonna be. I mean, that's life. A lot of times people know what's gonna happen next in their life with the people they know and care about because they know them as people. So why shouldn't that be the case for books? I don't think being predictable is necessarily a bad thing. And like I said, there were still a couple things that surprised me as far as the way external forces responded to kind of our internal character's decisions. I, I really enjoyed it and I would definitely recommend it to anybody interested in a fantasy, but also dealing with a lot heavier topics like intersectionality of privilege and uh, themes of colonization and decolonization. I just, I would really recommend this book and I think it's also just really fun. My dog missed me. But yeah, really great, really well explored themes, really fun plot, really interesting characters. I'm here for it. I really enjoyed it. And I think I am probably in the majority of people who've read this book. 
But yeah, like I was saying, I think I'm definitely in the majority of people who have read this book and really enjoyed it. I think it totally lives up to the hype. And it's kind of interesting for me. I haven't really given a synopsis of this book, but like if you want the synopsis, go look it up. But the thing with me about R.F. Kuang's books so far is that based on the synopsis alone, I've never been that interested in reading them. The first time I heard the synopsis of The Poppy War, I was like, meh, that doesn't really sound like it's for me. But then like all the hype like pushed me into it. I ended up really enjoying it. I heard the synopsis for this one and I was like, ooh, I don't know if that's gonna be for me. But again, the hype and I enjoyed the Poppy War so much. I was like, okay, let's do it. So I think the next thing she does, I'm just gonna ignore the synopsis completely <laughs> and just go ahead and read it and see what I think. So that is all I have for this book for this weekend. I had an incredible time. The show was so good and I am happy to be back home. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching and I will catch you on the next video.